just in case you're waiting for permission to focus on yourself, voila, here it is. You have permission. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me here today. If you're new, I'm Amanda. Welcome to the channel where we are all about shattering the mental health stigma. If you haven't already, please make sure you make sweet, sweet love to that subscribe button. Give the bell a few kisses. It's the best way to support the channel, to support the mission of shattering the mental health stigma. And you don't wanna miss any of this content that's designed to help you with your mental health or help you help someone else. Today, I am reacting to Waiting Between Worlds by Zach Hemsey. This was a request from Dr. If, who had jumped on one of my Friday live streams and made a generous pledge, and this was my token of appreciation, is reacting to a song of their choosing. So on my Friday live stream, we just talk about where we're at with our mental health, whether we're struggling, whether we're feeling on top of the world, or if someone just has questions, they can come ask that. And we just have a conversation because that's what we should be doing. And everyone should have that safe place to do so. And I wanted to provide that. So every single Friday, I'm there. 10 a.m. Arizona time. This is a little bit different than my Patreon. So my Patreon has several monthly live streams as well. But that's more to hang out and get to know me better. I also do priority song requests for my Patreons. You get exclusive uh, content that I only create for my supporters there, sneak peeks at my upcoming reactions and content for the channel, personalized stuff, so, so, so much more. Make sure to check that out. In both cases, every single dime raised goes toward my mental health outreach. Link is in the description for the Patreon. Jump over on the channel if you want to join us on Friday. Today, like I said, I'm going to be doing Waiting Between Worlds by Zach MC. So let's see what I'm getting myself into today. She was alone in the bathroom, eyes fixed like a statue, wrists sore and her face bruised. She just waiting for more bad news. Now she's white like a full moon, but she can't bear what the test prove. At a crossroads, need a rescue. Cause what she gonna do? Hold on. Going on with the pregnancy content, all right. Still here on the channel. That's That's been the focus the last couple weeks of several videos. So there's confirmed abuse. Obviously, this guy is aggressive. I'm not sure if the sore wrists are a reference to wounds inflicted by her aggressor or self-inflicted wounds, as I don't see any to reference. Uh, but obviously, she took a positive pregnancy test and she's not knowing the best action to take, and that's often the case for many women. It can be a very confusing and shocking event, something that uh, we don't always know what to do. We don't always know how to handle it. We don't know how to get ourselves in the best situation. And she's at a crossroads where her decision uh, will branch out polar opposite timelines for her life and for her fate. He was looking at the pale sunrise Thinking back on the time gone by How he loved and he laughed and he cried How it all was the blink of an eye Now he's looking at the shake in his hand Thinking how much more of life can he stand And how many years can he cram For his fate gives way and he's ash in the sand And is it the last stop on the road Or the next step in the path grand and unknown A milestone formed from the fruits of his ways Okay and what comes with the end of his days But the sun's rays shine on the face so divine The main drill of mine goes to phrase in his mind Wise to the signs knowing soon is the time But he isn't ready to say goodbye Hold on You 
know, grief can feel like you're drowning, so there is the symbology of that. This reminds me of the scene on the Odyssey where Odysseus's mother walks out into the sea because she's overtaken with grief because she thinks he is dead. And that scene gave me nightmares as a child and really broke my heart. Now, as I'm older, it still breaks my heart, but I understand it, uh, that grief can just be so encompassing. And he misses his wife, obviously. He's lost his wife and he misses her. This is a man that's at the end of his life and I think is afflicted with Parkinson's, but he's reflecting over his life and his choices and is coming to terms with a death that he doesn't seem to be entirely ready for because even though he misses his wife uh, the lyrics are telling me that his faith is a little shaken and he's confronted with his mortality and uncertainty if there's anything beyond this final breath and then as time goes on it starts to get to the point where it doesn't matter he'd rather just uh pass over cross over whatever that means but he's, he's wondering if there's anything beyond those final breaths and it's just desperate to reconnect to his wife. I like the, the line, um, a milestone formed with the fruits, or the fruits of his ways, I think is what it says, because that's acknowledgement that his reality, both the struggles and the joys, were the culmination of his choices. That the sun's been found, he was shot in the head near a club downtown. And the terror in the hall was profound. Her legs broke down, she collapsed to the ground. As the walls were spinning all around, he said, Man, please need to come right now. So she's sitting down, dazed in a cop car, swerving through lanes in a maze with a crazed dog. And locked in a haze from the shock, thoughts frayed as they stop with the stomach in knots. All the words in her mind as they raced inside. grief. That waiting room scene reminded me of when my mom passed away and they pulled me into a little waiting room and the doctor said, you know, she had an episode and we've been trying to revive her and at this point we've stopped trying. And I had that similar reaction of my entire world just caved in on itself and nothing seemed real and I collapsed in the middle of CCU. I tried to walk back out and I, I collapsed. So I get that. That escalated quickly from those other two situations to the police showing up for a shooting that, that definitely escalated a little more than I expected. But a mother getting the world collapsing news that her son's being shot, and this is obviously her reaction to the news. Between Worlds, to me, symbolizes the agony that comes from having to make a life or death or quality of life decision that will, simply put, alter the trajectory of your own personal world, because it's the world that matters, right? It's the world that we're experiencing. Uh, but it's also the purgatory of waiting. You know, with this girl, she has this waiting period in the first place. With the man, he is having to wait. And that's what he feels like he's doing at this point, is just waiting for uh, the end. And this woman, she had to wait to get news for her son. And there's just such a heavy burden for those that are left in that purgatory of waiting. You know, waiting for an absolution, waiting for hope and comfort, feeling stuck between life and death, which is something I've experienced so many times. Waiting between worlds that divide to a choice and define A break in the line where all paths intertwine And no roads lead up a press behind And all signs need no way to side They say all things never truly die But change in existence 
who switch designs like a dream to an ocean in which we're blind. We remain set in motion for worlds combined. So if I had one thought that would last and hold, a mass and fold over as the fast it grows. Infusing a life like a fabric sewn, clasp the vast field with existence flows. I'd say settle down if you please let go. This world's nothing more than a magic show. The tragic at times and increased in woe. And it all works out like this truth I know. that changed the tra trajectory of his story and experience now. Probably not, but crazier things have happened and there are circumstances where pregnancy or things like that have helped people heal from their own tragedies, their own uh, stories, their own pain. I really loved the last part of the song because the first law of thermodynamic states that energy of a closed system like the universe is never increases or decreases. So the total amount of energy that has been in existence has always been the same and the form that that energy takes changes, but the energy itself has always been the same because science, science. And this is a reminder of our connectedness to, to those we've lost, to those that have, have left their physical form, whether there's something else or not, the energy that animated them is still very much there. It still exists, whether their consciousness does or not. That energy still exists, and I very much believe there's a way to connect to that at the very least. Um, so regardless of the challenges posed, our decisions are simply energy, and it's energy that's dispersed accordingly to, uh, to our choices and stuff, but it will change, and it can change, and I believe we can have influence on that. Um, that's a rather splendid focus to have, actually, is that it's just energy and we can control or manipulate or influence that energy. So I know I know that, obviously, but it was just a reminder I think I needed. How many of you needed that reminder too? As always, share your stories here in the comments. That's how we shatter the mental health stigma is by talking about it, keeping the conversation going. You can come over on our Friday live stream if you're needing a little bit more connectedness, a little bit more interaction. Share your energy, share the energy of your loved ones. If you've lost someone, please feel free to share a memory or share some wisdom that they had shared with you here in our community. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it. You never know who might, not, might need to see it. I love the videos that end with hope like this, that it's a tragic story to watch, it's painful to see, but then there's hope at the end. And I believe that that's very telling for a lot of our journeys and experiences as well. There is a lot of grief and a lot of pain and a lot of trauma, but there can be a happy ending too, and I'm living proof of that. So I love you guys so, so, so much. Mwah. Thank you.